kita di sini akan uh, ya kita akan menyaksikan sebentar lagi yaitu antara tim liquid versus invested gaming untuk game yang pertama iya lagi anjir anjir oh batal lagi lagi enggak lah Team Liquids turn to ban. Legendary. Invictus Gaming's Team turn to legendary. ban. Legendary. Who has the edge? Merlini. Team Who's going to have the edge in the draft? Liquids turn to ban. I think Kuro has the edge in the draft Invictus because of Jace's support pool turn to ban. To ban it now. I think Kuro's got a better team around him. I think he's got better op options. Makes drafting a little bit easier. It makes you look a little smarter than you actually. Yeah. That being said, Kroki's had some disappointing TIs Team in Liquids, recent years, so to pick. who's to say? I think this could be the year that he's actually going to get his uh, top placement. Maybe not win the whole event, but... It looks like it. It's starting in the winter bracket's definitely a, yeah. a good place to be. It's in. a very good start, for sure. And they got to pick their opponents, and I really, I think they...
。然后三三号位要再选一个控制，然后呃这样来给这个卡尔牵扯就发育空间。但是他这个呃。刚被蚂蚁加卡尔，我觉得完全依赖于四五号位，但是四号位还是一个死玲珑。你说他会不会会不会这样子的？就是说他选刚背的时候，对面后面点的时候，哎，他被迫转了转了三号位。嗯、呃，我跟狗哥的想法是一样的。对，有这个可能。那呃，那只能说就是说被。上面做的准备没有那么对对对，被 IG 整个就是陷入 IG 的 BP 陷阱了。我觉得 IG BP 做的非常好。其实。刚没有那么怕 A 吗？我觉得他直接出笛子，就是说就一个笛子恢复装嘛，再撑别的也没那么怕 A 吧。肥的刚被谁都不怕。<笑>好的，那我们现在看到双方 BO 三的第二局的 BP 也是已经开始了。Liquid 这边依然是搬掉了帕克和夜魔。夜魔对，上一局这个夜魔跟狼人好像放的 IG 有点舒服、啊。对 ，IG 是搬小精灵和小牛没有差别。嗯，对。现在 IG 是位于一个先手拿人的一个优势方，我们看一下他第一轮能够抢到的单位，军团发条，然后还有这个小强都还在场。夜魔确实上把波波卡给他们带的那种干扰很大。对，是的，保了炼金无解肥，然后又去进行游者 gank。要想一下，这把夜魔虽然他发挥很大，但是也有原因的，对面控不住他，对面海明唯一一个封路他还可以飞起来，本来就跑得快，对吧？对，本来也跑得快，还可以飞过去，基本上是。看到对面就基本凌控，只有卡一个急速冷却，能对他稍微造成一点点威胁。那对。Like slow Five people and fight them with remaining. the birds and grave ch grave chill, but lichen doesn't Team care about Liquids that. What do you think the reason is for picking the visage for a better lichen count? Uh, I think visage can be a pretty solid, like building siege. Mm -hmm. Push, you can push buildings. You can fight early, group up, force IG to deal with him. Bemnirus is also quite okay to actually stop the lichen when he's coming in with his uh, uh, summons as well. You can protect yourself from yeah. your teammates uh, with a couple of bird drops. And once you have like Five three, seconds then remaining. you're Invictus wasting a lot of that lichen. Invictus Gaming's turn yeah, to ban. So, I mean, at this point, I do want to ask about the Tusk first pick from Team Liquid. Is this just going to be a well-rounded, safe first pick because of his ability to roam and support various lanes? Is this just he's an all-around solid pick at this point? I think it's just a, I think it's a comfort pick for... I would say Kuroki. Ten yeah, seconds Kuroki. remaining. And it's hero that's very neutral. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't tell a lot. And with the remaining. first pick, they wanted to keep their draft pretty open, which is wh why I would think they would go for it. It's uh, the hero that they usually always pick when they pick Wisp as well. So Kuroki is very, <laughs> like, he's been playing. I love the fact that we are seeing Broodmother banned third from Invictus Gaming. Just absolutely does not want to let Matumba Man have that option. Yeah. I'm also interested by this Monkey King ban from Team Liquid first as well, given that Monkey King has not really shown up too much. That's the Baboka special. That's his hero. He invented that hero. He arguably put OG <laughs> in the lower bracket with that hero. Ban. Invictus Gaming's so turn at this point, how would you describe just the qualities of these teams in terms of first two picks? And Team tell me a little Liquid's bit about TL. turn to pick. Bad Rider! Team Liquid, pretty solid starter. I'm a little bit surprised by the early Visage. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have guessed that out of them. I thought with Wisp and Caud, or I guess Caudal was still in the pool, but Light Night Stalker being there really deters that pick. I would think they would go for the Shadow Shaman, but really, really bad against Lycan throughout the game. So this, you know, they're just adapting to what IG is doing. 
Five seconds remaining. I think they're making some good decisions so far. Yeah, Batrider has been a super common pick. Invictus Games turn to Bristleback. First or second. <laughs> oh, Bristleback. Interesting. The thing that uh, I just like doing here is that they, they're, uh, they're going to have the wolves to scout people, and they have bats to be able to like, uh, catch them when they find them, and Ennis can also reduce the vision from the enemy team with his ultimate, so Ten they're going to have remaining. a lot of vision uh, advantage on IG. Yeah, I mean, having Five three excellent remaining. vision heroes is going to help in terms of all sorts of positioning. The Bristleback pick is very interesting to me. I mean, it, just in terms of statistics, which again, I know we distrust PPD. Don't you bring up stats around me. Here it comes. Here's a stat. Lowest win rate of all heroes in 5K and up games. Yeah, but how has Team Liquid been doing? Team Liquid is not one of the lowest win teams at TI, Peter. Ah, huh. well, there we have it. There you go. Stats don't lie. <laughs> um, I think Bristleback, Bristleback he's, oh, sorry, you can go ahead. Oh, I just think he's, he's a great tool for Team Liquid to group up and really just kind of force objectives and not have to worry about the vision, the vision disadvantage yeah. that they're definitely going to be at. They, they, uh, IG won't really want to jump in and grab the Bristleback if the team is uh, behind them. Then it's a very good... Like, yeah, they can send Bristle in, and they yeah. can kind of hide behind them and wait for IG to initiate, and then they can counter-initiate. What I'm looking for from Team Liquid is how are they going to deal with this lasso? Arguably, every fight is going to begin with IG's Batrider blinking in and grabbing somebody. You know, have all the vision in the world to hopefully get a good selection. And the problem not here is that so they also pick their two support heroes, so they can't really fill in an Oracle or Venge or any other hero that can stop Visage it. Visage could be core. Visage could be core, yeah. It could be. Yeah. Could be. I mean, Kunkka has been a very popular pick against Batrider to try to X your heroes back. Yeah. Team Liquids, turn uh, to pick. I don't know. Like, what, what other heroes have we played? Uh, Besides Wisp, Coddle, and Shaker. Shaker played. Not Sanking. Sure. Sanking. Yeah, I don't know if I like any of these. Maybe, maybe so I don't know if play Visage, though. Have you seen Matuma Man play Visage? I don't Five seconds yes, remaining. Pops, oh. A lot. Yeah, I Do would I imagine so. so. A lot of one positions came here ready to play Visage. Because yeah. EG is uh, the team that I've been seeing, like picking him the most on in one. We got AA here. I actually really like it. They're lacking in control a bit, but whoever back grabs, they're arguably not going to save him anymore. Maybe does GH play Oracle? Tusk? I bet he plays Oracle. Oracle. Oh, yes. Oracle. Oracle ultimate nice ability to save whoever winds up being lassoed. Not yeah. my favorite hero versus Lycan, but it can work. So at this point, Invictus very much so is in need. Strong mid laner unless they're going to do something unbelievably kooky with this lineup. No. AA mid. Do yeah, they even have enough damage to kill the Bristol? You just build the hood. Yeah, actually, what would you highlight as, like, the biggest weakness of each team that you're seeing with these given picks, Merlini? Well, I don't think Team Liquid have any way to really stop them from initiating. There's, like, no way that Nice Soccer, like and Bat aren't going to be able to get the Like, Tusk and Visage aren't very... Well, these heroes aren't very good at protecting their... Like, you can stand in front, but you can't actually do... And how would Team Liquid want to try to overcome that in their last two picks? Uh, I think have a really strong team fight, like, you, you, like get a pipe and Invictus kind of Games dare them to go on you, to where they might not have enough damage, and then you just get counter nation destroyed. Now they actually have a way to stop the lasso if Weaver gets Axe, but it's probably uh, going to be a position one Weaver, so Axe is not the first item that he's, he's going to buy. Yeah, I would guess the Visage is probably slotting in for GH. Ten and, uh, seconds support. remaining. And Weaver is a hero that naturally builds Lincoln. That's something that we really, or I really like. Five seconds Rider. remaining. Kind of shuts down and limits everything that he can do. Also, Weaver, and pretty much solo in a one v one matchup versus Batrider in the right. early game, um, because of sh allowing him to max movement speed. Uh, it's very easy to move all the sticky and mana to spam. That's actually a really great point. The fact that. Buy, or picking a hero that can easily buy a Lincoln in order to turn respond to, bat. to the Batrider. Yeah, ideally, against Batrider, you want all your cores to have access to that item or someone to save them and get assoed. They could still get throw on Liquid, right? And put Weaver offlane and uh, Bristle mid. Drow? Uh, they could do Drow. People have kind of liked Lycan against Drow, but you know, everything else is remaining. not great against Drow. And IG's, what they're really lacking is team Five fight. seconds remaining. They can be really susceptible to down a lane, but they do have the last pick with a very powerful mid here, I would guess, that they think can 
Yeah, I mean, there's already hints that Invictus Gaming is setting up for that, banning Ember Spirit, which is one of Miracle's strongest heroes. Seeing him go 20 and 1 in game stages was really Team remarkable. Liquids, turn to Invictus pick. And a ban Gaming's on Templar Assassin and the Invoker. instant pick Invoker. Invoker, okay. Or Miracle. Okay. A signature strong mid. Not a, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of liking where IG's at right now. They got Lycan, he can build a BKB. Night Stalker can silence up the Invoker. Invoker and Weaver will both, both probably have Lincoln Spheres by the end of the Ten game. Ten seconds right. remaining. Help manage themselves against Batrider, but they really don't have a great counter for Five Lasso. Five seconds Any of these, remaining. Like Bristleback, he might be fine if you get Lasso, but with the, with the right amount of focus and AA there, they could put him down. Alchemist. And Choose Alchemist. Big bad uh, Alchemist. That what is an a, interesting pick. A lot of damage. Um, no, no more, no team fight. I would really worry about Liquid grouping up and pushing down a lane. Yeah. So in terms of these lineups, what's going to be the path to winning for Invictus? Liquid needs to group up and not, you know, not worry about the split push. Just push with your heroes down the lane together. Well, I have great news, ladies and gentlemen. Game one is underway. It's done for us at the analyst desk. Let's head down to the casters for the action. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live here from the floor of Key Arena getting ready for a matchup of two old Dota organizations, but Lumi, they've got some fresh faces. Liquid, they've delivered spectacular moments at the old Benaroya Hall. Of course, IG, you know, is a former TI Championship team. None of these players were there for that, but they have a legacy to uphold. Coming in, I think most viewed them as underdogs. Share that sentiment. For IG, for sure. I, I think they're the team that they won DAC as a major tournament, and since then, they've been slumping, slumping, slumping. And I think PPD used the correct term when he said they squeaked into the winner bracket. They were just one win higher than VP. And honestly, they got chose by the top seeded team, Team Liquid, being viewed as the underdog. Yeah, there was that great reaction shot of No Tail, like, oh, where they thought they would have a shot at tiebreakers. Didn't end up being the case, so of course. I kind of like where IG's at right now. They got like any can build a BKB. Through the lower bracket, but they've done it before. And with that, the teams the enter the, the field Invoker, of battle. So Invoker, I want to Weaver, talk about both this Alchemist pick. Alchemist, a virtually <laughs> forgotten hero. He's only picked seven times Manage in the group Batrider, stage. Really and he actually had a pretty good win rate. It's 57%, but he might very small sample lasso, size. And certainly a hero that you're not going to pick up. early in a draft. In terms of the play style, I think Alchemist provides hey, a lot yeah, against Team Liquid. And team Liquid will like to group up and push as a lineup. And you throw down that acid spray, well, the push is going to get weakened. It's a lot easier to defend. And also, having an Alchemist on your team really just gives them the impending clock. You know, if you don't yeah. beat me so in 20, in 25 lineups, minutes, Alchemist will take over a game. Winning and we'll see Invictus. if IG will have that game plan working out for them. But as the panel pointed out, I think they Liquid were favoring IG's draft. And, and I think you and I also favor IG's draft. Yeah, I'm curious to see how the Alchemist fits Liquid into it exactly. Down. Obviously, well, this hero is very annoying. So, what will the build be? Are we going to see that, you know, the traditional nowadays Radiance build? Do we see that old school super? Combat build, I think Sumail went for it one time on EG. You know, how do they look to play around this Alchemist? That really will be the big question that defines the overall way the teams match up. Yeah. My initial guess is you go for the armlet, you go for the Radiance, and you just stack armor. Because look at the other side, you got the, the Exhort Invoker, that's going to be dishing out a ton of physical damage. You got the Visage Birds, you got the Weaver, you got Bristleback. All of this is physical damage, so I, it would not surprise me if you see games. Shiva's Guard and Assault Karyas coming out here from Alchemist, or, or just from the entirety of EGs. Yeah, for me, looking at Team Liquid, as we talk about the way they're going to match up, GH is probably the player that I have my eyes on most. He only played, I believe it was six heroes in the group stage, and the vast majority of them were either Earthshaker or Io. So mm -hmm. the Keeper of the Light was usually banned. Uh, they didn't want to go for it this game. Uh, oftentimes, it, it's Kuroki who takes up the Visage, but we, of course, his Tusk is fantastic. So GH, curious to see how he can contribute as a hero that we don't, we haven't seen much of him at this event. Honestly, I don't think he will be able to contribute too much this game because he's played as a five in this game. Look at Kuroki, he's essentially roaming, playing as a four. And as a result, Visage is also a, a, a hero that it takes a while to come online. You know, he needs that level six to be active over the map. So I think the superstar that the panel was looking for in the form of GH, I don't think he's going to show up, at least not for the last, first 10 minutes. Maybe Kroki gave him a few pointers. He makes his move on mid here. So we are going to see some early 2v2 action skirmish in the mid lane. Otherwise, looking at the overall drafts and strategies as we have a bit of back and forth here, 
Uh, how do you feel the two teams match up? On the side of Lakewood, you've got that Miracle Invoker, which single-handedly has won countless games that looked almost unwinnable. Uh, is that what Liquid is relying on this game? How does IG look to play against that? And what are the team's overall game plans moving forward? Well, when Mirko goes off, it's generally because his team is setting him up for Sunstrike kills. What are the Sunstrike set up in this game? You got Ice Shards, you got Snowball, and perhaps the familiar stuns. None of these are super reliable. So I think Mirko just needs to outskill his opponent and land raw Sunstrikes, which can be extremely difficult against great players. And early on. ECS, he is not having a great time now. Generally, Invoker wraps up a lot, right? As you get extra points in Exhort, uh, you get your levels. It gets a little bit easier to CS, but this Alchemist is really taking it to him early. OP no. dominating this mid lane. For sure, and his allies are doing an excellent job stacking the jungle, getting a couple of denies in here, which is critical <laughs> against the Alchemist, but you're absolutely right. I think OP is just handing it to him. They're hanging on every creep last hit right now. <laughs> The bounty runes are going to spawn. We'll see that illusion picked up by Baboka. Uh, of course, this isn't Monkey King, probably the hero that he made his, you know, stinks his name on, but I, I think Night Sucker fits that mold. If they're going to make a move, a mind control trying to force him off this bottom lane. Obviously, Bristleback was the beast of Dota for the last, like, three, four months, but do you feel like he's still the same hero he used to be? The team's gotten better figuring out if the nerfs finally caught up. I think so, and also IG is very well equipped to deal with it. They have a little bit of minus armor in the form of acid spray. They got that ice blast. If you land it on the uh, bristle bag, it does make him taking down much easier. Because during a team fight, he, he generally has a ton of regen, and ice blast has no to all of that. Denied. Early days here, but IG off to a good start. So Get back in the game as bottom lane, the action heating up. Mind control slowed down, not quite enough for the cold feet to take. Uh -oh. It's almost there. Uh -oh. He sticks around, he's uh -oh. up. He wants the solo kill, but not gonna happen. Q scores a crucial first blood for IG. And that is that is the game of Bristleback, right? You have an IO there, you have a healer, like a dazzle. All of a sudden, you probably get two kills instead of dying. Now, I do want to mention, because this is some, somewhat of a kind of an unstandard build for Bristleback. Whenever Liquid plays Bristleback in the off lane, he loves to go soaring into mech. Not, not often that you see mech being purchased on Bristleback. And the reason that Team Liquid likes to do this, they like to group up in 10, 15 minutes and start pushing and applying pressure. But again, I think IG's lineup is well equipped to deal with that. They got the acid spray to slow down the push, and they got the ice block. You know, if you want to buy that mech, sure, a single ice blast will ruin your team fight. So I'm looking for mind control to get that mech, and perhaps it won't be as effective as usual. Yeah, of course, we have been keeping an eye on the stacks here, as there's quite a few heroes that can take advantage. The Alchemist, the Bristleback, potentially Batrider. Lots of Flash Farmers in this game as success continues to apply pressure top. Traditionally, Weaver, one of the stronger laners to try and deal with the Batrider, and he's going to make his move. Matumba Man going in deep for a potential solo kill. As the uh -oh. Storm takes him down, that minus armor is substantial. He's low, sticking up, but right into the clutches of GH. Liquid looking to strike back here. Sakuchi, and they will get the kill. A long committed chase does the trick, but at the same time, IG able to grab a kill of their own bottom. They take down mind control again, and one thing I wanted to mention, Luby, is it's not even nighttime yet, and IG are already winning the lanes. Now, ideally, is the time where Provoco can really shine. Yeah. You know, both carries getting a kill or helping the team to get a kill, but Burning didn't have to leave the lane, you know? Matumba Man chased like halfway across the map for that kill. Burning's like, yeah, I'm right back to the CS. So, slight lead for me, uh, for IG here as well. Again, I, I feel like I'm painting this story where IG is, you know, doing super well, and they are, but you gotta keep in mind they are coming here as the underdog. And this is really surprising to me that they're able to do this against one of the top teams at this TI. Well, Miracle has caught up very nicely here. Now down only 6 CS. It's not the stomp that it was at the start of the lanes, and not really being pressured during this nighttime. But Boca, critical to see where he chooses to invest his time and resources, and it will be on bottom for now. Mind control there to shard him in. Good fly. try, but <laughs> flap, flap, fly away. He is out. Batman with the easy escapes. Still, though, Liquid not giving up kills. And that is good news for them. Stark is gone. I guess for IG Lumi, aside from this Night Stalker, anything else that you think is going to... Oh, they're going to find an opening here. Bottom lane, Kuro getting picked off. In a bit too far, and does punish. But the Night Stalker, really the playmaker for now, right? Because you've got an Alchemy who needs to farm. The Batrider, who has got his levels okay top lane, but it's not really farming a whole lot. So the Blink Dagger or the Drum, that initiation tool, will be slow. Uh, thus, they're super reliant on Popoka having this kind of start to, to be in the lead early. 
Yeah, and I think they're okay with that. If you look at IG's lineup, to me, they look like Team TSA. Like, look at how much vision they have. They got the night vision, Good. they got the Batrider vision, and of course, the Wolves will be coming out to just scout everywhere. To me, this is one team with, like, global satellites, Mind my control. optics, and then mind control is playing blind on this bottom lane. Global Bobo damage through, but Loka chewing through him. Those fights don't phase him. Cold feet not going to set in. The quills are stacking up, but the DD rune gets the job done as Boboka continues to rampage through Liquid. This goes back to that IO ban where the Bristle just looks like a completely different hero of GH is able to back him up. That's something a Visage can really do. Not at this stage of the game, anyway. A large part of Pearl's ineffectiveness in this game is also due to the fact that there are a couple of heroes that could just get out of eye shards. We saw Night Stalker just flying over it. Guess what? Batrider can do exactly the same. So I feel like Kuro is feeling a bit stranded at the moment. He wants to poke in these lanes, but it's just hard. I think the easiest lane for him to kill was OP's mid lane Alchemist, but now that he's got level 7, as well as a uh, Helm of Iron Will, I, I think that kill is also not going to be likely. What is this level 2 Kuro Tusk going to contribute on the mid game? I'm not sure. Yeah, historically where we've seen Kuro on the Tusk find those early kills, but... Watch out, mid lane, Miracle, the focus got your numbers, trying to slow him down with the Cold Feet coming in, they'll TP in, but it's a measly Vincent, what can he do here, GH down, or sorry, a Miracle down, GH trying to respond, but the Matumba Man joining the fray, chases on with the Sapuchi, but the Boca's away to safety, they force out multiple TPs, and still easily gets away, and oh by the way, top lane, XXS, getting some free space now, it's level 6, can cut this attack. wave, precious farm time wasted here for Team Liquid. Bad to worse. Yeah. The Tumpet Man forced to TP mid to hopefully get a kill for the team. Unable to get it. And like you mentioned, XSS getting the freedom to catch up on the farm. I'm not gonna lie, LD. Oh, so we have a row in. They and roll on the Q. They want to catch him out here. The shards come through the sun strike. Will it connect with the cold snap? Miracle. Magic wall. He turns around. <laughs> All right. Just a quick 360. It will take him down in the end. Good catch on the uh, on the ancient apparition. Alchemist in the jungle gives up the lane to the AA and good nice. critical pickoff to prevent that level six. Meanwhile, simultaneously we see Mantuma Man chasing down. Liquid showing some sign of uh, hope here. And you notice when they made that move, right as it hits daytime, they're already ganking mid, they're looking to pressure the Weaver uh, with the Weaver. So this is the time for Liquid to get aggressive. One thing I do want to point out, Lumi, they have not stacked really much at all for this bristleback. No ancient stacks as of yet. So Mind Control off to a rough start, only 2k net worth, and won't have an easy comeback. He's going to need to skirmish more than just be able to freely farm stacks to get back in this game. I think when you're losing this hard in the early game against an Alchemist, there is a danger point where you stack and Alchemist just waltz into oh, your jungle. Kuro just went for one, actually missed it. The Ancient Prowler Shaman not cooperating, he, so it didn't quite aggro the creeps the first time. So they've been trying to stack, just not timing it right. But the economy game... Suffering here for Liquid, normally one of their strongest attributes as a team. So LD, I gotta get your opinion on this. On the bottom lane, we see Burning queuing up for the Necro 3. As the panel mentioned, one of these standard build is going for that Mask of Madness armlet build just to get in the physical right-click uh, right click damage. How do you feel about him kind of adjusting from that and going for the more traditional Necro build? They're so physical damage focused, right? You've got a Visage, they're likely building a Medallion, GH already has it in the quick buy, the Swarm, Throw up Lightstone in there, the Invoker right clicks a goo. Like, you don't want to have minus armor, and you also don't really want to run into this team without a BKB. So, I like the Necro Book pickup a lot. It allows him to keep his hero a bit safer. Uh, and still apply pressure as a Liquid move in. Trouble. They want to go on this bottom lane. They're going to spin forward on the Q, catching up the Ancient Apparition. One more attack scores the kill. Very successful daytime here for Liquid, and all the while, Miracle. Catch up in the mid lane, but this Alchemist is far ahead. 7k net worth. Almost halfway to the relic as XXS gives GH pursuit. Diving deep. And this top tower. There will be a rotation from Pearl, but in addition to that, the big man Wolf is coming in hot and heavy. He wants DH. Looking to munch him up. Snowball keeps him alive. Miracle joins the fray. Burning to do not but watch and now commits the familiar summon. Jukes away. So far, not too shabby for Liquid. Uh oh, this Wolf is somewhat confused. He's where'd I go? Just runs around the corner, Dyer's still maintaining that really high attack. movement. And they can pressure Radiance bottom because this lake and left the lane. Attack. Will even be a rotation. Still, they're going to just get a tower here. No level 6 for Pavoka. Don't Dyer's have to start this just yet. And with that, tier 1 down. First blood, as far as the towers go, is actually Liquid. Opening up the map for a team that sorely needs it. And with that, 
still keeping this game pretty close. A very strong recovery for Team Liquid, at least handling some of the other heroes. But I think the biggest hero that isn't really tracked up right now is the Alchemist. He 108 CS in 10 or 11 minutes, rather. The birds! Save the birds! Right. But this Alchemist, back to the main point, is... Once he gets Radiance, and he's just gonna farm up the map, I, I don't think Team Liquid could keep up with OP. They're not particularly Radiance good at killing tower. the Illusion once they get farmed enough, Dyer's right? They don't have a Hex. Uh, I guess they have decent damage, but nobody on their team is particularly amazing with them. So, those split-pushing Illusions could be a nuisance. As far as mobility goes, they're okay there. Great. Dyer's they structures are fortified. Farm and with wax the BOTs, but... Not there yet. Look at burning Dyer's top lane, though. Top pressuring this tier attack. 1 tower. It's uncontested because Liquid are on the move. Trying to pressure IG in the jungle, but as it is nighttime, the Boca able to easily dodge fine. that gank. So IG will respond. They get this Liquid tier 1. They open up that jungle a little bit. Let's see what their next we'll move is. That. Batrider Blank still about 500 gold short. Meanwhile, as you mentioned, Radiance coming soon. And with that, the Radiance and the Blink, there's going to be a big tower spike for IG. Yep. Let's not forget that Q is about to hit level 6 as well, so it really combines nicely into a timing. You blink in, you lasso, you ice blast. Even the tankiest heroes, such as Mind Control's Bristleback, will just fall very, very quickly. Looks like he's working into a hood. Oh, they're aggressive, Lumi. They're already Radiance going to this tower. tower. They're doing it at nighttime. They're attack. doing it with a Bristle. It's not particularly Dyer's farmed as fun. But here come the familiars. Attack. The Tumba Man getting onto Q. The Swarm not going to connect. Don't know if he actually needs it. Stun number nice. one. Stun number two. If there were any questions about GH, of course, well, we're getting answered now. So this is tier one. Now well under siege, but Radiance burning. Continue the pressure at the tier two top. Pearl wants to make a move. He could be getting trapped. Nice top for all the back line too. Middle Looking for the flank. Fall. Revs up the Zobo that tries to retreat. The shards are there, but not going to keep burning away because he's running in. Munches up the tusk. Snow cone for dessert and bottom lane. XXS being pressured here. That right almost down. Miracle pumps the damage in. Scores the kill and the tower denied top. Still liquid losing more. More and more map control, but they are responding well in terms of kills. They are, but I think the map control will be a big factor moving into this mid game. Again, Team Liquid is a lineup that lacks vision to begin with, as we do watch that Batrider kill open things up with a cold snap into a meteor. But back to the main point is that once Team Liquid, especially when they lose this mid tier 1 tower, they are going to be absolutely blind, especially during nighttime against IG. And the analysts talked a decent amount about the vision game. I just want to emphasize it. You have, obviously, Night Starker Batride already very strong. And then you have a Lycan with the Wolves. So yep. combine that with HF Apparition, like, there is absolutely no way Liquid should have the vision advantage unless they win multiple fights, get a gem. Uh, it's expensive. You have to invest in that. Here comes the Blink debut. They cut off the bat, but he comes back with a vengeance on the mid lane. Pushing Mind Control in. Controlling him nicely. IG for the kill. And they transition for an objective looming. Oh, they want to try to roll straight to the pit. No wow. hesitation from IG. Is there any way Liquid can contest this? Do they have the firepower? I mean, the Tumba Man could port back to the tower, maybe throw in the swarm. They could maybe send some birds in, but IG is just getting up way too quickly. They will take down the big rock man and I flame the agent. Fighting into Radiant this is so hard, right? The radiance is up that that mid is going to be absolutely huge against all this physical damage. So Liquid just don't want to risk it in 4v5. I do want to point out one tiny thing in, in the game that we just saw. We saw the lasso coming out, and Bobuka cast the silence on the tusk. And the idea behind that is he wants to prevent the snowball save. So we're going to keep looking out for that in these upcoming, upcoming team fights. The Night Stalker will try to shut down the tusk, and then the Batrider will get to do his thing. It really is the only reset that Liquid have, right? right. Barring and a, it's a, a very, very farmed, unreliable one. Yeah, bar, barring a very farmed invoker, uh, but likely he's going to be the target for those lassos. You don't have a bench, you don't have the GH, you know, Earthshaker or scared. Io, both of which are fantastic defensively. Dyer's middle tower in particular for tower. interrupting that top situation. As the move happens on the top lane, they look for my control. Deal with him, and he will be shut down again. That is death number five for the Bristleback. He is just a factor this game. It's always a bad sign for, for your team when you're dying to a Batrider who's not even ganking you with Flaming Lasso. That means you go back to the base, he gets mana, and you can smoke up and gank Radiant's you again. I feel like is IG is winning Radiant this game so hard that Team Liquid fire. needs to do something amazing to make a comeback. They have good wards here. They might be able to set up something on Burning if he sticks around, but you can see the Wolves marching in, scouting out Liquid, and so all of a sudden it's IG who could potentially get the jump here. 
Lasso available. XXS coming back and burning. Juking away to the north. Dodging the gank. And, I mean, we've talked about the vision. We're going to continue to do so. GH gets stunned That's up here in the woods, but nice familiar micro. Gets him back safely from OP, who is hearing rather fearless with, me with that Aegis picked up and the Radiance. These wolves constantly falling liquid. He's been using them to farm. It's purely about getting the jump. Trying to find pickoffs. IG going for a smoke gank. They have the vision right on this ramp. They can go for the GH for the quick kill if they want. I think they're seeking for a bigger kill. They, they want see Miracle. Oh, this is the hero that needs to farm. He can't afford to die, but he's at the neutral. And Miracle trapped down. No mercy from the Vigilante bat. He'll take him down again. And this wound is just seeing so much curl now, is the tech that he's only level five. His rain drop is not gonna save him as he's being burned up. Okay, nice snowball here. Alchemist is gonna stun himself, but there's just way too many heroes. Curl will also go down. 5k net worth lead here, 17 minutes in. And just for a second, take a look at that network bar on Alchemist. It is ginormous. And IG making the right calls here. They get the kills and then they transition straight into a tier one tower. They want to further eviscerate Liquid's ability to get out on the map. So now only the tier one mid left standing. As far as those outer structures go, and they get the jump here. You can see, like, when that happens, like, we just they don't really ever reply. They're constantly getting caught off guard, especially when it's nighttime. It will now be day. We'll maybe have a little breathing room, we'll but take that. I mean, Lumi, does Liquid have to change something? Can they afford to like give up these kills? Just try to farm, turtle up for late game? Do they have to take some risks of their own? Is there an item they're waiting for? Like, what sort of adjustments do you want to see out of Liquid? I think they just have to keep taking risks. They are so far behind, and they have a lineup that needs a ton of items to operate. You know, Miracle Invoker takes a while to get online. I think the adjustment is going for those Lincoln Spheres that the panel has mentioned. Miracle is going for it right now. Weaver, I think, needs to go for one as well. You just need to make sure that you're surviving against these Bat Rider Lassos. Miracle, though, Sunstrike kill, I believe, in the base. Yeah, almost killed one off Matumba Man solo and catches Kaboka on the TP out. Sick play, and now okay, looking for OP. OP. He does have Aegis here, they'll have to kill him twice or get out, and they do. Kill him once, look for more. Mind Control joining the fray, but has to be careful. Look for the familiar sun, trying to lock OP down with the Ice Blast is there. Connecting on two, blast him back in with the play break. XXS, oh, Piggy, he even finds Matumba. Ends the killing screen, but the combo comes through. Miracle. Roasting up the wolf and donning his hide is a prize. Three do fall for Liquid, but they get the Aegis. They do manage to kill off the Lycan. They keep their Invoker alive. So, again, not the greatest fights for Liquid, but definitely could be worse. I, I think it looked pretty good for, uh, for Team Liquid at the beginning, but as soon as they took down the Aegis, I think they just needed to get back. They even with the Invoker coming in, they ultimately don't have enough firepower to take down OP a second time. And speaking of OP, he is BOTs, he's working on the Manta style, and that split push that you keep referring to is coming, and it's coming very fast. What is the answer for the split push? I have no clue. I mean, Invoker could help with Forge Spirits, the Weaver could take down some of these illusions, but I think OP will just be absolutely everywhere. What I love about the this build in this particular game is that they, they can take advantage of those lanes being pushed in, right? They have a lot of heroes that scale well with farm. Heroes like Ancient Apparition, Night Stalker from the support role. Obviously the Lycan, the Bat Rider can certainly use the farm. And they have really good map control Dyer's to follow up on tower smalling on waves being pushed in and punish it with the vision game and with pickoff. So it's not just split push Dyer's without a follow-up, it's split push with a purpose. Scared. Yes. Currently, looking for the jump on the mid lane again, it's XXS, and he catches the save. Kuro, no escape, silent stuff, dealt with early, good familiar stuns by GH. But still, the chase is on, can they follow this up with another tower? They look for more, hounding GH from the side, XXS blinks in, the swarm descends, and IG keep the ball rolling. Multiple kills at nighttime, more towers claimed. I do want to point out that they managed to get a deep ward down while that was all happening far behind this tier 2 tower in the mid lane. So, again, they are, they're not just getting the kills, they're following it up with crucial objectives and setting up for the next one. Yep. All the meanwhile, their economy game is going strong. Bobuka is constantly providing vision. Speaking of which, Matumba Man thinks he's safe, thinks he's farming. And the gank is coming. Oh, you wanted a Lincoln Sphere for him. The lasso is still cooling down. Okay, he's even got the silence for time lapse out, but it's on cooldown. Play break back in with the silence coming through. The cold feet, ice blast. The bug is squashed. IG 
making it look easy versus Liquid. Again, another gank without flaming lasso. That, as Team Liquid, what do you do against this? You can't farm. They have to take these risks. They have to get out there and farm because that's how their lineup operates. But right now, IG is just giving them absolutely no breeding room. One thing I, I do want to revisit is the question I brought up with the Necro books. As the game moves on, you can see that these Necro 3s are so effective. There are two Invis heroes on the side of Team Liquid. The Sakuchi from the Weaver, as well as the Ghost Walk from Invoker. And with the pop of the book, both those abilities are out of the window in terms of effectiveness. So really good choice here from Burning. I like the fact that he itemized back into a Vlad's. A very standard build, but again, the name of the game here for IG is about armor stacking. Make sure that you just don't give away any easy kill. And every piece of armor you stick on your heroes is going to make that happen. OP with his two pairs of boots shoving in this middle lane, looking for the tier two. But here comes Liquid on the wraparound, mind control, stacking up the quills. OP's the man in front. They want to find something a bit tastier on the backside. So they sneak around. They try to get the jump on IG, but that's damn hard when they can fly. The bat jukes away, and OP rushes in straight onto the bristle. Nail him with the ice blast and to his cross where he dies now looking on the other side of the fight for miracle they take him down to ig completely overrunning liquid and now this could be rex right here might even be 60 more. seconds no before miracle back. comes back what are they gonna do against they can go top loomy they can maybe get two without the invoker can they cut the wave can they slow this down where are the answers for liquid where is the liquid from the group stage IG are absolutely astounding in this game, number one. Good stall, though, by GH with the familiar stunts, but they keep on smacking here. Melee racks dropping, dropping. Will go down. Familiar's being farmed up. Still no invoker. 25 seconds without Miracle. But IG, content with their one lane advantage, won't push it further. They back away. They know the next Roche could be up now, and if not now, very soon. So they're going to wait for that next stages. A Tumba Man trying his best to get the Creep Wave push out on the top, Dyer's but quickly top answer back as attack. the Alchemist ports back. LD, it might be too soon to talk about game two, because Team Liquid do have a chance to hold for a late game comeback if IG starts to make a mistake. But let's assume that IG does take this game. Is there anything from the draft that you, you might want Curl to change? Because I do feel like Pearl got somewhat outdrafted here. I liked the bans from IG in Phase 2. There was a game that Liquid played against EG where they went for like mega push. I think they had like a, a Visage, Broodmother mid, fifth pick, which caught their opponents a bit off guard. Uh, I want to say there was like a Lycan or a Lone Druid in that game as well. So I think IG definitely watched that replay. You saw their second stage bans were very targeted, but hold that thought because IG, they know this game isn't over yet. They want to secure the victory. The Snowball ball. Good. Retaliation from Kuro, but now he's being controlled by the Night Stalker. Provoca's in through the rear of the Ice Blast. Oh. Through. Another connection with the Flame Break. That teamwork making the dream work for IG. Okay. They will shatter too, and now again, continuing pursuit. Liquid will keep the Invoker alive. And Matumba Man hanging on by a thread, but the chase is on. If they can keep the vision, Matumba's in yes, trouble. They can. No time lapse. Lock him down and finish him off. IG putting a bow on it here. And now shrines on the menu. Roshan is back in about five seconds or so, so IG could just swoop in, check it with the wolf, and, and take it after that as well. So, so yeah, I mean, go, if it goes to that game too, I, I would like to see GH on something where he can have his impact. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a playmaker, maybe he takes on the, t the Tusk. Obviously, Kuro is a fantastic Tusk, and ever since the departure of of Jerax, he's really stepped up, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, you were asking about GH this game, and I said, you know, I don't think he's going to show up because of the lineup and, and how it is. We're going to watch this team fight one more time. At the beginning of the fights, looking pretty good for Team Liquid, especially with Batrider wasting the lasso on Miracle's Lincoln Spear. But as the fight dragged on, they just figured out, oh, we can't kill this Alchemist. Alchemist is chasing us down with these Necro books. Once again, IG just flexing their muscle. I, I will say, never sleep on a Miracle Invoker, but that said, this ward, Lumi. This ward. It's gonna make life very difficult for Liquid. IG in perfect formation here to anticipate this Liquid expedition. 
Kuro leads it fully oh. forward, and the smoke is revealed by the least gankable hero on the team. They're going to try anyway. OP does get locked down by the shards. He actually gets pushed away from his team about as good as it gets, but they can't focus him down. He just waltzes away. All the while, the rest of IG weren't really doing anything, but, but now they make their move. Blasso, Ice Blast, connecting on two, Boom. and then a song of ice and fire. Liquid are overrun. Kuro gets brought down. Three hit the deck. Now back for mind control, turning him into Chop Suey. They will kill him off. Chat will be spammed, and now Roche is next. IG putting on a clinic here to open up this TI. Two things about this draft for Team Liquid, it's not their uh, group stage draft. Group stage draft, they always have some mega push. Yeah, sure, you got Visage, you got that Invoker, but I don't think it's enough push, at least not the same standard as Team Liquid it's showed. It's a slower push. Slower it's a, push. It's a push that takes a lot of time and exactly. farm to come online, and IG have not given them that time. Second thing about this draft, two games that Team Liquid lost out of the three games that they lost in group stage was to a Batrider. I think looking into the game two draft, I think you might want to take out the Batrider, especially against one of the best Batrider players in China. XSS has been absolutely spectacular in the hero. Or or have a counter. You know, they, sure. they picked both of their supports to open the draft. And I think IG did recognize that. They didn't expect that mid to core visage that sometimes no tell runs. And as a result, they've been able to punish with the bat pick. So IG move in. Looking for the flank is the Tumba Man. But already the base is in shambles. Two lanes down. From bad to worse for Liquid. IG, going to retreat now. They've been systematic thus far. Still have some time here with their ages, their cheese. Any reason oh, not to just walk shot. down bottom lane and go for the Megas? Maybe wait for natural nighttime. Just make sure that you have a very, very long team fight. The one thing that we haven't really mentioned, I'll hold that thought here as Q. We'll go down, but we'll do some damage to Matumban before he dies. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. uh -oh. Not worth it if he gets caught out. No Lincoln's here. Just no yet. time lapse. He already used it to try and get out of there safely. Oh, and IG pursue him. They see him sakuching through the wave. They expect him in the trees. It looks like he's juked it. He will TP out. So a little space created, but they're going to need a lot more of that. IG still hunting for him. Now maybe just going to back away and wait for all five. Wait for that Ice Blast, and like you said, wait for that natural nighttime. Coming soon. Also, OP is very close to finishing a Shiva's Guard, so having that extra bit of armor allow him, allows him to tank in the front. Although it doesn't feel like he even needs it. He's been pretty much immortal throughout this whole game. Liquid hanging on by a hope. Probably a prayer as well at this point. They do have the gem. Try and deal with IG, but now the issue is going to be like, you might even see them coming. Does it matter? They're getting to that level of farm on IG where they don't have to catch you off guard. They don't have to necessarily have the vision advantage. So the yeah. gem will help, but will it be enough? And now there's a BKB. BKB lasso? Your only counter initiation is what? A snowball save? That's basically it. Yeah, it's the same thing. You know, you, you pray on the Lincoln Sphere, you pray that uh, the snowball gets there. The BKB just makes the life a little bit easier for XSS, but the overall game plan hasn't changed for either team. IG, just gonna start battering down this bottom lane, it appears, as they congregate. Burning looking to join the squad. Assault Caress completed for him. He has been the siege engine to back up the Alchemist as the frontline tank. Now the Shiva's coming out and gets aggressive. Charging in, lobbing in the stun, going for GA, keep it through the pipe, the damage is substantial. They try to slay the beast, but the Alchemist shrugs it off, forcing Liquid on their heels, chewing through the Bristle's HP. I'm the real tank now, says OP. This is not your Bristle back of three to six months ago. GH now taking the stun again and Bernie racing onto him. They turn back for mind control. Miracle sounds the retreat with the deafening blast, but Kuro is caught in the crossfire. A second hero down, the support duo of Liquid that has been so instrumental in their run to first place in the group has been very quiet in this game. 1, 2, and 13 combined. The two support players to me was, they had no role in the early game. They had no good lanes to gank. They weren't able to win their own individual lanes when they weren't ganking. They weren't stacking like you were mentioning. I just felt the effectiveness wasn't there, and Boboka spamming them Jayos as a uh, oh, IG but, about to but, take Mega Creeps. But Boboka showing that he is not just a Monkey King player. 4, 2, and 15. He might overextend here, but it's okay for IG. They've already gotten the Megas. We have seen some Mega Creep comebacks, but down 30k gold. You'll probably need 4 or 5 fights to turn it, and Liquid do lose one. They'll sound the GG. IG dominant to open up TI.
What more is there to say? There were a lot of question marks around this team, Lumi, but I think Valve recognized, we all knew they were capable of greatness. Some question the direct invite, but they, I think, show here, and they showed it in the group stage. They are a solid squad. They are not a one-patch team. And now Liquid has to go back to the drawing board heading into that game number two. Yeah, it's just the way that they did it this game. I don't think they made a single mistake. And something that PPE brought up in the panel is that when they win, they win as a unit. And we saw that everybody showed up and played, starting from uh, Q's first blood on the bottom lane to OP, all the way carrying in the game. I felt like... Game. They had no good lanes to gank, they weren't able to win their own individual lanes when they weren't ganking, they weren't snitching. I just felt the effectiveness wasn't there, and Boboka spamming them Jayos as a uh, IG I'm about to take Mega Creeps. But Boboka showing that he... Invictus Gaming's turn to ban. Team Liquid's turn to ban. Invictus Gaming's turn to ban. Team Liquid's turn to ban. Invictus Gaming's turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. GH still, GH still Team smile. Liquids turn to pick. One. That, that is important. You know, uh, it, it cannot be understated the crippling pressure of being a game away from elimination. And this is not that match. These two players are in the winny, winner's semi. Team winner Liquids turn to pick. Finals Keeper of the light. And uh, one thing that's so fantastic <laughs> that is that yeah, you lost that game, but you got a cushion, right? At the very least, you lose. You don't even have to play today. You have a full day to recuperate. Unlike tomorrow, where, or unlike later today, where if you yeah. lose that one, if you lose that first game, you're done. That's it. So I think like these teams have been on so many events that they don't really get, like 
uh, leftists get to uh, the that seconds. they get the like, pressure after just only this really? game. They know that this is a long event, and as I, like as I said, they can go to the low bracket as well and have a good run from it. That's really there. impressive to me. I would have assumed that a lot of people get, you know, stage fright, especially given that Key Arena has that, you know, circular crowd and you can feel them in the booth when they're cheering. I think maybe new teams has it, but at least in the beginning of the, the like, tournament, you were very calm. Team Liquids, turn to bat. Pretty Out chill. Yeah. In my experiences, everybody wow. really just kind of, you know, it takes a second. I think when you sit down at TI for the first time, the crowd's super loud, and if you hear them announce your name and your team, you get some... That can affect you. Yeah, you get a little anxiety going on, but once you get into the <laughs> game and start playing, Ten seconds it's pretty remaining. easy at that point. Now, and right away, this is an interesting set of picks out Five of the seconds game. Remaining. I mean, typically, especially if you were looking at times of past, there would be a long wait to pick mids and carries. I mean, Invictus here we have Lycan and Alchemist as the first two picks. Bad. This is Invictus saying that they have a particular strength here, because now they have the vulnerability of uh, just being counterpicked by Team Liquid. Well, they're, they're forcing Liquid's hand. They have a game cushion here to, to lose. They say, hey, you did an awful job of dealing with Alchemist last game. Maybe you can do it a little bit better this time. Ten Usually seconds it's not remaining. that good to pick in the first two, like most teams don't, because then it gives them, like the opponents Five actually three picks remaining. to counter the hero. But uh, Liquid actually picks the call this time, which is a comfort pick for yeah. GH and the Brisbane as well, which is a very good partner with the call so. Team and I, I want to touch a little to bit bad. on the idea of counterpicking Alchemist. What are the types of techniques that you would be looking to use to destroy an Alchemist farming? You want to pressure him early on. You really don't want to let him jungle or get a good like a lane mid as well. And all of that happened the last game, so I really think that Liquid is going to look out for that. Ten There's two heroes remaining. specifically. I think Ursa 101 versus Alchemist is terrifying for Alchemist. Uh, and then A is really good at shutting him down. You have to like, reconsider building the armlet and you're extremely easy to kill. What do you like about Ursa versus him? Just the lane matchup. Like, he can't come up to creeps at all. So you just land Ursa mid against Alchemist and mm -hmm. Alchemist would have like a slow start? Yes. I've also seen Meepo occasionally, but I don't Invictus think... Invictus Gaming's turn yeah, to Yeah, and bad. I think that it was really really just amazing to see how Invictus Gaming was pushing so hard, largely in part thanks to the Lycan, that Alchemist was always so far away from where any of the other players were on the map. Team it Liquids was just turn clean to farm pick. from start to finish. It's and the Knicks man. Timber saw is one of those videos. Invictus well Gaming well. turn to <laughs> Oh, they actually did go for AA. I thought maybe they wouldn't go for A since they already had Caudal. It's kind of a weird support duo. Yeah. It's so good versus Elk though. Yeah, but it's, pr it's pretty far from what we've seen throughout the rest of the tournament. There's yep. also a Bristleback, so I'm kind of wondering what these next two heroes are going to be. Are they going to have a little bit more catch? You know, once again, we haven't seen Liquid lineup with no disables. They might and just get a like, Sven or something with remaining. the AA on the safe thing to make sure that Ooh, Sven. the cold feet yes. wars off. But, uh, I like that. Sven caught a AA. It's a solid try lane. And Sven destroyed And also like, that uh, they can put Bristle and Caudal off lane and AA plus on safe lane. So would that be a Miracle Sven, you think? It could be. He's been kind of playing like the one. Yeah, for sure. So we've been talking a little bit about Team Liquid's lineup. What are the huge pieces that are currently missing from IG? Gee. I mean, I, I guess. Uh, obviously, Alchemist generally speaking, big ports, <laughs> flexibility. <laughs> yeah. I think when you pick Alchemist, it's, he's so rarely put in that support position anymore that you're kind of pigeonholed into protecting him, getting the radiance online. I don't really think they can like veer too much from their ground. That's a great point. I mean, we've been seeing teams do things where they'll pick an Earthshaker early, and it's unclear, is this going mid? Is this going to be roaming? Is it going to be, you know, traditional offlane? But here, the Alchemist kind of puts the hand face up. I mean, are, is there any other way to play him other than just hard farming? Not that we've seen recently. You could do something crazy and irresponsible and make him play support. But I'm sure Baboka would be up to the task. Team Liquids, <laughs> time to pick. Ricky. Oh, Ricky. Okay, okay. Boboka, Ricky. I was thinking about Enchantress for IG. How do you feel about that, AK? Okay. It would be super good. They yeah. have uh, Keeper of the Light and AA, which is like two of the worst heroes against Ench, so... Yeah, you have a lot of experience with that hero. Yeah. I kind of identified that trend Ten last seconds. year in the <laughs> oh, really? I started playing. Well, I started playing Ench and Chen a little bit because I saw... Five I seconds it was Navi, remaining. ...who was doing really well right before they were, TI, yeah. and they were crushing it with art style playing Chen and Ench, and it's because these two supports have no way to deal with the creep that yeah. Ench or Chen brings to the lane. That's a like, really tr trigger point when you want to pick Ench. When you exactly. Take you, can take, you can take, Ench can go to any lane at this point with a creep, and Liquid can't really do anything about it except get out of his way. Yeah. So that's a free lane one for In IG to decide to go that route. They did get the weekend, though, which is, I guess, uh, Bobo Casiro, who's going to play the Ench otherwise, I guess. He's still before.
Do you know I mean, Edge? Yeah, edge I guess. Could be a five. Yeah. True. It's gonna win you a lane. It, you know, it's similar to like Lich, which is not banned or picked. It says that you end up with both Wiki and Edge, which maybe isn't the best support remaining. one because both of them really want to roam, so you don't really have a lane support. Maybe Lich. I feel like Five maybe Lich would be nice remaining. for the light and give him some ice armor in the early game sure. to help deal with the bristleback quills and also give make his lane a little bit easier because I imagine he's gonna be pretty pressured with bristleback and caudal on his face in the early game. It's very good against both Bristol and Orsa, especially since they're physical damage, so the Lich Shaman is going to be very good against them. So I feel like Alchemist is still going to be a large centerpiece for Invictus, and obviously yeah. you've mentioned that Ursa can wreck Team Alchemist Liquid's early in lane. Turn this is back. sort of pigeonhole <laughs> Ricky or Lich. We're killing it, man. Look at nice. us go. This is game two. Do you think that like Ricky and Lich will almost be a little forced to address the Ursa Alchemist problem? Or do you think that this is exactly what Invictus wants? They're happy to dedicate a hero in order to help the Alchemist-Ursa matchup. Ten seconds Lich remaining. Yeah. yeah, Lich is definitely gonna have to help out the Alchemist. Yeah. They're yeah. very happy with that as well. Five I mean, when you pick Alchemist first two, you know that the, the, the like, other heroes like, really needs to fit well with him because he is, as, as you said, the center of the, the draft. I'm a bit worried about these, the Lycan and the Alk. I think they're both gonna have a hard time in lane. Maybe Ricky and Lich can help them, but I don't know how much help Ricky's any of these heroes. Maybe Ricky... Yeah, Support-wise, Ricky is good against Keeper of the Light and AA. They don't really want to fight Ricky as well, but I think they're going to stay close to their core, so Ricky won't really find them in the, in the jungle. So we talked a little bit about some of these specific lane matchups and the concerns. What about just big game-wide strategy? Again, Invictus is going to be very centered around during this game giving Alchemist the chance to get as much farm as he can before engaging in massive team fights and pushing down. What, what, how would you evaluate the existing, just broad team goals of Team Liquid? I'm not sure where Team Liquid's going, to be honest. They I, want to I, pressure them at the least. They want yeah. to have the, like, Crystal Buck in the front with Coddle and pressure towers early on, and Nurse as well, maybe getting a early blink dagger to make sure that they can kill out. I mean, do you think it's safe to say that Five perhaps there's a lot focused remaining. about specific early hero matchups and trying to gain an edge there. I, I think what they want to do is take, get Bristle really nice and fat, take that on T1s, do Roach with Ursa, and then just have Bristle back sitting in the front, and have in these two like and Alchemist yeah. just very, very poor, and then they won't have enough damage. Their lineup on Invictus gaming side cannot do any damage. Like, especially if they last pick a Sven, God forbid, anyone with Warcry, they're done for. I'm worried that Liquid's going to be split pushed this game by Alchemist, Manta, Radiance, and Lycan Ten summons, seconds and Ricky, and Scout, Ricky, you know, Putting deep wards in, finding out where Five hopefully Ice or remaining. Liquid's initiator Team is. I don't, these heroes pick. really need somebody to lock somebody down in order for them to connect on their damage. Ah, uh, Sand King. Again, we're, we're seeing some hints of similar wishes to have good pickoffs. And actually, I mean, Sand King seems to fill a lot of nice gaps. Again, the super reliable stun for Sand King. Sand King's nice. Ten he doesn't have a bit more team fight. Hopefully, Ricky will be able to find his targets for him so he can. Five seconds remaining. Stun. It's also quite okay against Ursa on the lane if he actually can get some uh, levels, but probably Ursa's gonna have A with him. Yeah, Sand King, probably not the best laner in this game. I think that's gonna be the biggest struggle for IG, but Lich should hopefully help at least one of the lanes, perhaps two. So I feel like the big story for IG is that they obviously primarily want Alchemist to get lots of farm this game, and secondarily want to make sure that Lycan doesn't get dumpstered in his early game laning. So it's exactly. really going to be a lot about how these supports get allocated in order to protect those two big goals in the early game. For Team Liquid, their last pick is coming in now. Monkey King. Miracle Monkey King, man. There it is. Armor is king. Okay, all right. I have no idea what Team Liquid's primary path to victory is. Okay, you have any thoughts? Well, they're going to push the lanes. They're going to go Roche with Ursa, and they're going to... Like, just hope that they can find the Alchemist and kill him, but it's gonna be hard since they have Ricky and Lycan to scout, so... It's almost as though their primary goal is just to not let IG achieve theirs. Well, I'm very excited to see if Team Liquid can pull it together in this game. They lost game one in a convincing fashion, and IG is looking amazing. Let's throw it to the casters for game two. Lumi, if there's any team that should know what a Monkey King can offer and how to deal with them, you'd think it would be IG with Baboka. And I have to say, while sadly we won't be seeing QO on the main stage here, he did perhaps leave a legacy with his mid-Monkey King, which we got to cast in the group stage. Yeah, the mid-Monkey King, or Monkey King in general as a core, has been talked a lot, you know, behind the scenes, backstage, rumors, 
And it's whispering. Whispering. Yeah, it's, it's here to show up. As we get into the game, I'll talk about how it matches up against Alchemist, and I'll tell you, it's a pretty good matchup for the Monkey King. Yeah, get excited, guys. We've got a mid Monkey King in none other than Miracle's Hands Liquid on the ropes. Now, they've got to take two games to avoid getting dropped early to the lower bracket. If there's one team that could do it, though. Number one team in the group stage. Yeah, absolutely. In the tougher group, some would say. Now, that said, you know, Liquid, they do have one big big notch in their belt coming into this TI, that is of course their epicenter victory, but overall you look at the last year, they have struggled to close out tournaments, obviously yeah. Star Ladder, which was lacking some of the big names, they also did well at, but historically this team is always in the running and a tough takedown, but rarely do they make they it They were the always number two, second place in some of the recent majors. I mean, even if you go back all the way, talk about history, Kuro, second place at TI, you know, like just going way, way back, so I feel like Team Liquid has put in time. They really just want to come in with a big win. And on the other side, you know, you've got Bernie. And I don't know that there's a player who's been Yo, at this the guy, top level longer than this guy. Destined to win a TI. So many legends, like you look at like Fear, for example, finally yeah. stepped back for being a player this year. There's few players that have played as long as Burning, and fewer still who have not won a TI out of that list. You know, I like how we talk about these big names, but some of these players that hasn't been to TI, this is their first TI. GH, a superstar for Team Liquid. And of course, the, uh, the three playmakers of IG, think about OP, XSS, as well as Bobuka. This is their first TI as well. And, and arguably, they are the most important players most reliant on the team. Players, yeah, they, both teams rely on these players so much. So it just shows you that experience is one thing, making these deep tournament runs, but all of these new organization and teams need new blood to kind of make things still function. So many storylines at play here as we get ready. The teams entering the lanes. And the battle about to begin. Liquid gonna set up with the begins. offensive dual lane. And I think the good news is for Liquid, they do have a GH comfort pick. So we see Baboka early trying to get that rune steal. But instead, Liquid, slight little advantage for them. They'll have the triple bounty rune grab. So, thoughts on the laning setup, Luby? We're gonna see Matumba Man going mid as the Ursa. Someone who can. Uh, so it won't actually be the Miracle mid uh, Muggykin that we thought. He's yep. gonna head safe lane. Uh, and this is something it feels like could put a lot of pressure early on this Alchemist. In fact, when Miracle played the other Monkey King game in the group stage, I do believe that was a safe lane as well. They're going to give the matchup of Ursa, uh, something that Ben Wu touched up on the panel, is one of the most amazing matchups. Look at OP's position right now. Hasn't even seen a creep. Just watching as Ursa denies. Yeah, Ursa with chilling touch. You don't want to be trading at this yep. stage. So. Also, one quick thing I want to mention. Look at... Lycan's item choice here. Normally, as a safe lane carry, you, you, you know, start things out with a stout shield or the makings of a poor man shield. You get up a lot of stats, a lot of regen. He's got boots first. He knows he is going to be sacrificed in this position. They're sending the Lich bottom. In their mind, it's more important for IG to win Sand King's lane than to win Lycan. So right from the get-go, you have two cores of IG that did the heavy lifting of last game, but being completely sacked from the lane stage. This XSS Sanking better come up huge. And Liquid are already trying to really take advantage of this pressure opportunity oh, as GH is dragging the creeps at the top lane, allowing Mind Control to get aggressive on burning, but the early boots are certainly helping limit the damage. Still creeps already hitting the tower, getting that early attrition in. So IG, as you mentioned, it's really all invested in the Sand King here. He has yeah. to have a good start. He has to get a fast blink or at least some items that allow him to rotate, and he needs to go and salvage the other lanes. Because as the lanes stand right now, OP actually doing all right in the farm department, but always there's a threat that he just goes down uh, and gives up kills to this Ursa, especially if Kuroki is in the neighborhood. And the big difference between this game and the last game is that I don't think IG is going to be able to give us many stacks to the uh, Alchemist. Ricky is just not a good stacking hero because he just goes in this and the creeps lose his vision and then the creeps just go back. And then Lich, he's going to be sitting in the lane pretty much 100% of the time, so he's also not going to be off uh, the jungle too much to stack. So. I really want to focus on this. Like, what? Oh, Baboka. I was going to ask, go. what can Haze. he do? And he gets a haste through and he gets a courier kill. Oh, man, this guy. So many plays at DAC to win what was basically... I think most would agree, like, the, the third major of the year, just in terms of the stiff competition at that event, uh, and how grueling of a format it was, but... Yeah, what can he do? Like, aside from that courier snipe, Bristleback is not an easy gank early. Obviously, the Ursa mid is not going to be a possible kill without a three, maybe four hero gank. So, 
Is the Riki just purely here for the vision? Is there anything else that you could expect Boboka to get accomplished? I think on paper, during the draft, you look at these heroes like the Ancient Apparition, the Keeper of Light, as we have a Burrow Strike happening on the bottom side. Miracle takes a couple of nukes here, and they might be able to right-click him down. XSS, though, will get ice up. One more right-click here from Q. They will get the kill. They're gonna and get here more. comes Boboka. You ask what he's going to do? He's going to give you the second kill of the game for IG. They have disastrous lane. top lane. Burning get blo gets blown up as Liquid just get off that Illuminate in time. So they answer back. But the early aggression, again going IG's way, even in a game where it looks a bit harder to pull off at this stage. Yes. The rotations have just been so good. Let's see, Miracle trying to get that tree dance off, but constantly taking damage. Earlier wasn't able to. But Boca sneaks around. There's a sentry here. Kuro is going to deward him. So they are starting to fixate on this bottom lane with three heroes congregating as perhaps their best location to make those hero kill plays. Yeah, one of the things that Monkey King struggles as, uh, as a hero, is that he doesn't do well when you're running a bunch of heroes at him early on. And I think that's the reason why that IG has sent the Lich to the bottom. Again, they're sacrificing two of their cores just to shut down the Monkey King. There's a lot of value placed in that. But back to your question about what is Bobuka ultimately going to be doing. He's quite good against heroes like Ancient Operation and Keeper of Light because they don't really have a way to repel the Ricky when he's you know, chasing after you. But as such, like I don't think Ancient Operation or Keeper of Light has really left the lane too much. It, it's an awkward support duo, right? Yeah. It's, while GH's Keeper of the Light is certainly one of his strongest heroes and you know very frequently ban worthy. Uh, at the same time, normally they pair it with Kuro being a more of a playmaker. Like the Tusk probably comes to mind as the big one. Uh, oh, here we go. Bubbleka. They're going to set up mid, trying to look. For Matumba Man. No, oh, he's looking for the courier. Or maybe hey, the courier. It's alive right now. Okay, it gets bursted. That means on the way back, it's not going to get bursted. He does not have vision, though. So Baboka doesn't realize it's happening. Might try to turn his attention towards top. Go assist burning, but again, Bristle not a hero that Riki can offer much against. So really, it's the Keeper of the Light they're going to want to kill. And they've decided to move Q off the lane as well. Q is going to finally make that journey. You know, the panel mentioned perhaps the Lich can win two lanes. Well, this is going to be the start of trying to salvage one of them, at least. He will complete his rotation, but immediately Mind Control gets the go on and forces the TP lane not salvaged. Yep. An obvious synergy between this Liquid top lane is that you put the Chakra of Magic onto Bristleback, and he gets to Machine Gun Quill Spray uh, one to, you know, back to back. And that's actually pretty important in terms of the mid-game teamfights, as well as the early game laning harass against Bernie. They're getting out CS really hard, but the, the nice thing for IG is they have Greeble's Greed, so they're actually not behind at all. With that and the Courier Snipe, technically, they're leading. Of course, you'd like to be farther ahead with the out, but it is allowing them to stay in this game, and with the Lich Denies as well, experience is just fine for IG, so despite Liquid's strong lanes, they don't have that huge advantage you'd like to see. I mean, I think yes or no. You're right that the go graph shows that the two teams are pretty even, but you gotta keep in mind that IG's timing comes in a much, much later. Like, the Alchemist takes a long time to ramp up. Burning also will take a long time to ramp up. The difference is that Ursa, you get phase on this guy, you get blink on him, and he's just ready to go. And so right now, have those phase. Yeah, now. right now it looks cool right now for, for IG, but give it five minutes, Liquid is gonna be all over IG, and I, I don't think IG can handle that kind of pressure. Voka continues to roam during this nighttime, looking for openings. Kuro, does get a ward down. I think he has an idea where the ward is, actually. Yeah, I believe he did see it in the inventory, and he there will be instantly dewarding him. So, while well, the kills have not been raining in, Kuro doing his part here to lend some assist to the vision game. Early objectives were claimed. Liquid took down the tier one top. Obviously, a big part of their strategy is the Bristle is their main siege engine, and later on it gets a lot tougher once IG start to actually look to defend those towers, throw the Frost Armor on it. GH again just going for these wild dusts, just kind of hoping he finds the Riki, and again, he's not there. Now maybe tries to poke GH a little bit, no teleport scroll on him. Some early harass is possible, might even be a kill. See, Ow, gets activated. Back to safety. They're going to blink forward. Heavy damage, now the Cloud, but not enough slow. He's going to need a little more to take GH down, and Matumba is there to lend some support. Dyer's middle Still though, pressure's there that's already two just charges expended, neither of them effective, and what I like to call the support tax is certainly rearing its head. As Matumba Man moves in mid, clapping onto OP. This is out the ultimate. Chemical Rage down. 
pretty decent downtime at these early ones. So it might be an opening when this ends. Yep. Q making the first stack of the game for his team. Just what a difference, you know? Yes. Like, one wow. nation stack right now at eight minutes compared to, I don't know, the 45 billion that OP was able to farm last game, which is such a difference in the way that lanes were done as well as the pressure that IG is feeling right now. I'm pretty sure if he farmed 45 billion, there'd be like a lot I mean, of pits opening a up slight in the arena or something. Mind control now, TPing out. Pavoka trying to find that opening, can't quite catch him. And no point in the chain frost yet for Q to try and cancel the TP. But for IG, everything really is going to hinge on XXS. He's done a good job at not dying. He is farming really well. He's right farming now. quite well. He is rushing the blink. Your liquid, you'd love to try and maybe make a move on him before he gets it, but. He's just playing so defensively, and they really do lack the, the reliable kill potential here. You know, Ursa, no Blink Dagger, no real Disable to speak of, so while they'd maybe like to punish him, doing so is not easy. Yeah, something that was brought up during the drafts is that these two support duel for Team Liquid is just awkward. You don't have a good initiator. They're both kind of playing the same position. You don't have a leading Disable. Oh, have mind a leading control. Stun. Mind, which looks like he wants to go, actually coming back in. Does have the Chain Frost available. OP seems like he wants to fight this, but has no points in Unstable Concoction. And meanwhile, the top lane burning is able to run down GH, gets the kill. Invisibility. Looking to contest these Ancients early. Oh, burning, look at the item he's queuing up. He's going for a kind of minus on like it. All right, the gold strat for IG. Hey, man, if you, if you need to recover. Also, do it. I want to point out, Lumi, as these Ancients are being stolen by Mind Control, trying to limit that Alex economy. XXS wants to come in, contest this perhaps, he might have to burrow out to ensure this Cold Feet doesn't proc, he sandstorms for now, juking away. Meanwhile, Baboka being hounded, but he drops the Cloud, he continues retreat, Miracle there to cut him off, early five-man Dota from Liquid. Nets them a Ricky kill, probably lets them take down these Ancients as well. But look at this out, he's not actually going armlet, he's trying to go straight into the Relic. I don't know if Liquid is expecting this. Let's see, can they punish? They do deny the Ancients, they can slow him down a little bit, but it's still going to be really fast Radiance for him. One of the strengths of the Radiance is the ability to toggle and just gain like, a lot more HP during a team fight, but you have Ancient Apparition, so it's, you can't toggle, you can't gain HP. So I, I think this is actually the pretty standard response to what, you know, have, what you're up against. But, like, no durability items at all. We exactly. See, like, a Vanguard, or maybe at least a casual cloak as top lane. GH. Being hounded a bit by Baboka. His durability item this game is to not get hit by the ice. Blast. That's all really you can count on. And, you know, compared to last game, there was a flaming lasso into Ice Blast, so it was pretty much guaranteed every single fight. This time around, again, there is no delete disable, so if the positioning of the Alchemist is good enough, if he's fast enough, he might be able to just run away from the Ice Blast. We talked a lot about him at the very start of the game. We haven't really said much since then. What are you expecting out of Miracle on the Monkey King? So far, he's been quite content just to farm in this bottom lane. Hasn't really made any rotations. Has not been able to shut down the Sand King. Like, what is the game plan with him moving forward? Get Blink and get on top of heroes and kill them. Very simple plan, but as a Ursa... You oh, no, I'm sorry, for Miracle, not for Mithumbin. Oh, sorry, for Miracle, yes. Um, he is going to be the secondary damage killer. Epicenter, here we go. Straight on to Miracle. Cloud's going to follow this up. A quick kill for IG, the Blink debut, a resounding success. Here comes the push. Yeah, you just don't expect Sand King to pick up a Blink so early. And right now, Curl's hanging around. A chain of Frost to say, what's up? And Curl will just... on delivery. And the reason why he's so high level, he says he's been maxing Sacrifice. This is the build that you don't see too often outside Harry, of public. Carry Lich. Yeah. Well, not carry Lich, but <laughs> most of the time you just want to pick up a, a level of uh, ice armor or even two just to make sure that whoever you're laning against have a good time. But the greedy, greedy Dyer's Lich is one of the highest uh, levels in the game. So while that was happening, OP continues to farm. Radiant's basically done. Just needs about 300 more gold here for the recipe. The Blink is online for the Sand King. Burning's looking to catch up with this Midas. He has not died since that early moment. Getting very close to the recipe. With that, IG's gonna kick into high gear as far as net worth goes, unless Liquid makes some moves, Lumi. 
the Blink on Matumba Man you wanted to see is now about to be picked up, but Mind Control getting caught out here. The Burrow to start. Can he TP out quickly? The Cloud comes through. He tries to run. Stacking up the Quills. He's going to man fight his way out of this. Mind Control takes down one. And that's it. Oh, Bristle, Bristle feeling very mortal in this TI. Yeah, running for him again. Shapeshift about to end. Burning recognizes that as well. We'll just turn back. Hannah Midas, though, is online. And now wants to retreat away attack. successfully. Matumba Man does have his Blink Dagger. TP cooling down. And he'd make this committed jump forward. He can, but with the Frost Armor, it's not the easiest kill burning into the trees. And GH in pursuit, they maul the wolf. The bear wins the duel on the bottom lane. Miracle caught out by a burrow. IG with the response. Radiance online. I think that's a great trade. Let the farm for, begin. Yeah, for IG. I mean, they, they traded a like it for that just got a kill for the state lane Monkey King. Here's the thing, there is a Midas on the Lycan, so he, get, he gets to catch up, whereas I think the, the Monkey King is struggling right now to uh, He's working tower. towards the Echo Saber. You were asking what his role is going to be Dyer's for this game. He's going to be up in the front line, helping the Siege, Radiant's helping to tower. dish out some AoE attack. damage, but as the game Dyer's moves on, I think that role he will struggle to, to find and be able to fulfill, because this game will move into a phase where Alchemist will send illusions Dyer's everywhere. And I don't fallen. think Team Liquid has the heroes to deal with that kind of... Another mechanic to keep in attack. mind is like this Radiance Rush. Uh, in addition to AA making the armlet less useful, the early mischance is huge against Liquid. They have like okay magic damage from the supports, even quite good. But finishing heroes, you really want the Ursa to be right-clicking. Same for the Bristle. The Monkey King as well, super reliant on it. And Radiance we'll see Matumba Man getting aggressive. Killed. The Radiant Courier sniped again. Voboka smoking Liquid with his early movement. But Liquid is just going to stay committed here. They start to work on this tower, but they're pushing into Frost Armor while the Lycan is rapidly split pushing in the bottom lane. They're earning happy to avoid these engagements. This is characteristic for Liquid to be so all in on this five man aggression. Normally you've got like that miracle kind of insurance plan farming away. Radiant oh no, this has been Liquid's playstyle. I kind of mentioned it last Dyer, game when Mind Dyer, Control Dyer, plays Bristleback. He loves to go for the mechanism. Dyer's He's starting that right now. He didn't go for it last game because he was up against the AA. Look for Team Liquid to find man up and go for engagements here. Oh, Ice they Blast. This kill. Oh, kind of oh, oh, does get clipped, but now the Chain Frost ushering Liquid away. Oki is on the chase. Matumba Man potentially in danger here, but Boca trying to drop down that cloud and burning, revving up, shapeshift. And off to the races, oh, the wolf hunting and mind control on the retreat. Can they isolate this bristleback, bring him down? Good staggered retreat here, but at the same time, still the pursuit continues. Mind control getting control, but not being finished off rapidly. If Bo Miracle gets in position, pouncing down, sprints in from behind. This chaotic fight favoring Liquid, it seems, on the second round of engagement. A one for one thus far, committing onto mind oh control, but the G8 save! Huge plays, Gandalf to the rescue, and now Miracle springing up into the trees again in a way to safety. And they cage him. Yes, they can. The burrow's there. The MP to follow. Wait. He brings out, but XXS with the protection blink. Unbelievable. I think I just tuned into an episode of Naruto. I just see ninjas jumping everywhere, following each other. And great play by XXS. Getting that last lap with the blink dagger. Good stuff. He's working towards a four staff. But like you said, I think there is a sense of desperation coming out from Team Liquid. They are trying to group up and push. And, and trading doesn't work, Luffy. No, you're up against the Midas, work. you're up against an Alchemist with a Radiance, you're up against the Lich constantly sacrificing creeps. You are in an even trade, you are losing this game. Liquid Ursa. need more. Ursa, he is trying his best to hunt for these hero kills, but I think IG are doing an excellent job just staying spread out or when they are together, they're making sure that the supports are well hidden within vision in the trees. Oh, they do find Baboka. Can they wrangle him though? No. He's the, so fast with the, the commitment from Liquid with the sentries, the dust, like even if they kill him, he's already really done his job and then you throw the courier snipes in. Mind control now. Pursued a bit here. IG, as you mentioned, spreading the map, really pressuring these supports and... Yep. Preventing Liquid from going for that group up play, even if they might want to. Is there a plan B for Liquid? Like, do they, are they all in on this kind of early fighting, this early aggression? Can they try to slow the game down and... Oh, oh my God, steals the creep. Okay. Cheeky little bugger. Uh... Bobo Alright, still alive. Another dust? <laughs> He's forced out. Alright, for, for those that's new to Dota 2, that play, that was not really worth. Um, 
getting the the centaur for for his life. But yeah, getting, getting, getting into their mind though, that yeah. is uh, the, the, the yeah. psychological warfare. I think in the context of what they're doing, like those deaths are going to happen. He is there to space crate. He is there to drop wards. As I think that's the team is farming. That's really still him coming out on top. Just like filling himself a little bit, perhaps a little bit too much. Jaya's top tower but, is under attack. You know, like can't, can't fault him. Two pair of snipes. He's had a hell of a start as XXS oh, continues to make plays, cleaning GH and cutting him right off of his mount. Now, Liquid start to group up. They want this tier one bottom. But they're not really all that quick on sieging. Ursa not really the best building header. You don't get the benefit of the fury swipes there. They don't have any minus armor for structures. They're fighting into the frost armor, so like when they try to convert kills into objectives, it's slow going. I think the big thing for me is, where is Miracle's farm? He's been working on this Echo Saber for you know, a, a long time now. Even when it comes online. It's, it How much will it do? There's yeah, yeah. Frost Armor, top there's top an Alk who's well on his way to a Manta. I feel like if there is one major item that he would like to pick up, is probably the Desolator. Really helps out during his uh, Wukong command, and of course, like you've been mentioning, the Frost Armor, they need some answer to that. That was what we saw out of QO, and granted QO had an IO constantly just pocketing him in the mid lane, but... <laughs> They had that really that early deso timing where all of a sudden he dropped full commit and they like three heroes basically just died almost instantly to the exactly. Well the difference like Kuo had farmed that game. Right, right now Miracle's like first in line to the blue bank. Like who is that? Yeah, nothing. This is big. Liquid Dude claim an Aegis, crucial for them. They grabbed that objective and now they want to chase for more. Miracle leading the charge, springing in to action, but already IG sensing something's not right and they're away and Could see Popoka, just Tahun 2011 yang gue lakukan untuk memperbaiki dan menaikkan kualitas konten gue itu adalah gue minjem. Kevin Anggara di tahun 2013 ketika dia mampir ke kosan gue, gue ngobrol sama dia dan nanya gue bikin video ini saat gue pake apa aja. Bikin ini tuh pake apa aja. Dia bilang cuma pake kamera handphone gue. It looks like they want to commit here, but Mew on top of the lane, Gage could get caught out. On top of the man getting that two kill, but they're going to lose the keeper again. Semua tuh ada tasapnya nih. Semua tuh ada, ada setnya. Gak bisa lu langsung boom. Langsung berharap lu jadi bagus, langsung berharap lu jadi keren. Dan yang gua lakukan gua adalah nabung. Oke, nabung. Nabung. Untuk di webcam gue, no tiga seribu. Do seem to gain the edge here when it comes to that oh so important map control. They knock the tower down. Radiant's bottom tower is under so you were asking what is plan B? Itu lighting gua kurang, gua beli bohlam. Oke, gua tancap nih, gua tancap pake tusuk gigi nih, ke tembok. You were asking whether to take a scale. I think trying to scale against an Aldemus lineup is always very dangerous. I think it's got that Midas as his first major item, so he's building up for a long time. Yes, they can scale, but I just don't don't think it's a very good game plan. I think Liquid still definitely wants to go down towers after towers. Get the next rogue shot. That's the one thing that the lineup is super good at. You got Nasal Goo, you got Ursa, obviously, to just go into the pit. So I think Liquid needs to bring out the bring down the other towers, get the next rogue, and look to finish the game in the next 10 to 15. A crucial part of that game plan will be this Aghanim Scepter that GH is trying to complete to yes. sustain the team during pushes, but the problem is he's constantly being forced to buy all the extra protection. Green screen, I'm buying it. The price is very, very self-sure. I think the bigger problem is that Sankey is hunting him. He needs to die twice. Well, and Ricky. Ricky is a bit of a blow here. And guess where XSS is? Right next to GH. About to hunt it down again. Baru tu belajar. Gue pengen kalian buang pikiran kalian jauh-jauh tentang YouTube sama dengan nafis. Agak anjing. Kalau kalian mau buat sebuah video atau mau bawa sebuah channel dengan mungkin pengen terkenal, buang jauh-jauh anjing. Tidak anjing. Itu pada dasarnya bukan seperti itu anjing. Oke, ini tu udah salah kaprah semuanya karena. Follow up. He moves on to GH again. Just continuing to shut down his farm. Force him on his heels, he does have the TP, if need be, but the bait is there in the tricks of the trade. Still may go down, though, the ice flat setting up the time he's right for Kuro. The trap has been sprung. GH staying alive to help from an old friend. And I think that's a, again, like you mentioned, even though he died there, it's absolutely fine. I'm gonna watch this uh, team fight one more time. XSS identifies that Monkey King is the target that he wants, quickly goes on it. The Force Sap almost saves him, but XSS again. The ninja coming in. 
they're down a lot, Lumi. 10,000 gold. Granted, it is an outline up and there's a Midas, so you don't fully feel the effects in terms of combat, but it's getting far enough ahead that IG have basically made up for that greed early and now are really starting to dish out the damage. Liquid still holding the Aegis for a wee bit longer. They'd love to find a couple of follow up kills, maybe make a play, but in the bottom lane, it's IG who gets the jump. They burrow in, commit to this crystal. Can he stay alive? Tries to retreat with the soul and trip the mech. It's not enough. IG throw the kitchen sink. And it's, comes Ursa. It will flip him for now. The Frost Armor keeping you alive. Nice follow up there. XXS with the save. The off lane Sand King buying time, creating space. Liquid cannot reply. I think if Ursa was there earlier with the Ice Blast, he was uh, going to be able to get pick up like two to three kills. Unfortunately, just lacked the vision to prepare for any kind of IG gang. Speaking of vision, Bobulga has picked up a gem as well, so he's going to be able to walk around the map and give even more trouble to uh, Liquid supports. You know, it's starting to feel like that's something Liquid are going to want. Like him. Oh, like him well. They can kill Ricky. That's a big kill his. from Matumba Man. Yeah. Again, the bear proves his supremacy. I mean, here's the thing, though. You were asking, what is this Ursa going to do in the mid-game? And I said, he needs to jump in and get hero kills. How many times have we actually seen that? Like, that's maybe his second, third solo kill. And I just don't think that's enough to carry Team Liquid out of the, the hole that they're in. I feel like the Sand King has perhaps done that job better than he has so far. They have 13 kills, and he has been in 11 of them, so... Well, hold that thought here as the Puff of Man jumps in again, looks for Q, will find another solo kill, all right. But he gets Yule Scepter up, and oh, not dies. And if he dies, Matu in trouble, does manage to get off the Enrage. No more ages for him. He's gone in deep for this. He has Flash coming in, but nothing to combo with it. The timing was not right for Matumba Man. Forcing it too far and lost the death. I think this is a good time to actually toggle between the Radiant and Dire Vision and just look at the big disparity between the two teams. Radiant, only one war up on the map, much thanks to Bobokas Gem. Dire, wards everywhere deep into the enemy jungle. And this is not counting in the fact that, hey, there's a Ricky running around. But I think the answer has finally come here in the form of the Keeper of Light, Aghanim Scepter. Oh, During daytime, he will have flying vision around him, and if he could pick up a gem. Mind Control attack. on his own bottom, does have that AA behind him, but no real save. In comes out to start the fight, gets the stun up. Curl's They're gonna right follow here, this up. Burning, racing forward, they do have the Chain Frost to cancel. TP, Curl locks in the Ice Blast, but do they really want to fight? More are coming as Liquid Stream in Bavoka scouts out the rotation. He can't die, he has the gem. Oh, no, he dropped the jump. Just kidding. He's fine. And Radiant so crucial, again, the Ricky is allowing them to choose Dyer's their fights wisely. Yes. Attack. Otherwise, Dyer's Liquid likely get into pulled. position with four or five and Mike's over on IG. But they do take the tower again. down. Radiant's Give him three. Baboka continues to add to the coffers of IG. Radiant's Liquid. Alarmed are gonna force the issue, but with the Frost Armor and Colder Tower damage just being these melee hitters, it is fairly slow going. They'll take the tier two down. I think this is a group of push. They have met, they have daytime with the Agatha Scepter. They're gonna just look to try to win it or get some big, big damage coming in. They do not have radiance type though. They have one hood, so at the center could be huge. Yeah, well, if they can land it, that's the question. The Tumper Man down to about half HP. They're gonna go right on the Tumper Man. The heal coming in from Keeper of Life with the Chain Crop bouncing around. Ultimate committed by the Tumper Man. Can he make the retreat? It looks like he'll be fine for now, but already very low HP. Again, Keeper could juice him right back up. And I don't think Liquid is going anywhere. That's Chain Frost down. Chain Frost down. What more will follow? Lycan not split pushing. Meanwhile, Burning's trying to get out of the jungle and into the top lane, but it's gonna take him a while to get there. While for Liquid, this journey is rapidly taking form. Mind control flacking away, just poking, prodding, staying out in front. Matumba Man lurking on the side, wants to fight the opening here. Did just have vision for a moment of XXS. Not actually hidden. Liquid, no, he's in the neighborhood. He's going to try for the epicenter, but Matumba Man's there to interrupt this initiation. Great presence of mind from him. The Burrow coming through, connecting on two, but look at the heal. She aids the engine that keeps the push going. Now they deploy the Monkey King Wukong's command. Still, though, IG get the AA kill. They stay alive, but both is in through the rear. He blinks out. He will get decapitated. Liquid, that's the objective. Coming in. Aids the Alchemist, though. Like it with the Looking for more, but XXS. 
the rescue play, the triple barrel. Blake would still commit it. They will bring him down. This push just won't stop. Finally, Burning gets a follow-up kill. It was one by that already for Liquid. They need this tower. They might need more. IG know it's important. They won't get it up freely. They don't want to lose their tries. They're going to get the follow-up kill. That's a dieback on the Ancient Apparition. Huge commitment from him to try and take this tower down. And now the chase is on. They can round them in the rear. By control. Oh. He gets up the quills. Back to it with the assist. Can they bring the bristle down? He's also tanky, and Boboka continues pursuit, but it's slow. They need damage. They need control. He keeps on running. The wolves come in. They get him from the front, and IG, IG needs will to slay him. To go into the Roche right now. They cannot give away Aegis on top of we'll Team Liquid. Did you see how brutal that push was? Sure, it was a slow push, thanks to the things like cross armor, as well as acid spray, but like you saw, the, the Illuminate just kept healing them up, and there was no answer for IG. It wasn't until the Lycan throw came back and just backstab on the back line. They need to kill Keeper of Light before the fight actually happens, or else there's no way that IG, despite their net worth lead, could actually beat Team Liquid right now. I what? think it's important to take away the Aegis. Another thing that Liquid had in that fight is vision. They did not have vision advantage in the first game. This yeah. time it's different. With the Keeper of the Light, you have the flying vision during daytime. They also have the Ice Vortexes, so... IG have not been able, at least in that scenario, to get the clear jump. Like last game, they always had Vision Supremacy with Lycan, Batrider, and Nightstalker. Yes. This game, not the case. And we saw what Monkey King was able to do in that last team fight. Sure, he's very, very underfarmed, but his big contribution in that team fight was just drop his Mukon command. Once the command's out, there's two things that happen. First, your PC lag. Second, it also makes it super hard for IG to actually go into the area and defend the building, despite Assassin's Spray, despite Frost Armor. So, Team Liquid now working on the Aegis. This one will come with Aegis and Cheese. IG and IG fight it, so Monsu taking it down fast. The Roche about to fall. Indeed, it will. Blasting success up to the high ground. He's forced to retreat. IG are going to fight into this Aegis, and I think this time, Lumi, it'll come when Liquid are at their door, not just Ursa running in solo, looking for kills as it's about to expire. There's about two minutes left for IG, because I think Team Liquid will definitely wait for daytime, so... Do what you can, Oki. Slip push as hard as possible, and uh, get whatever item that you deem necessary. It looks like he's working towards a Shiva's guard. He's likely going to be able to finish it before the push comes, but it depends if he wants to retain buyback. Big Every Shiva's game, especially when you start stacking that attack speed slow and yes, uh, and the move top. speed with He's the ice attack. armor. Liquid basically to finish kills, they're yeah, relying on three melee heroes right clicking. Granted, Monkey King has pretty long range, but nonetheless, it will be a potential counter. Dyer's Bringing through the trees with a double damage rune and a freshly completed desolator miracle. Could be a huge damage during this fight. He does drop down into a camp while the flank takes four. Matumba Man coming in first. The TP onto the Wolves and now blinking into position. Miracle trying to bring down too early. Locked up the chain front. It's a bouncing beautifully. Massive damage from the Lich. And now Miracle standing his ground, fighting out that Lycan. The Wukong's command will end. The pain might begin now. Matu on the run, very low, but has the Aegis. Second life also for mind control with the cheese. Can they win round two? It doesn't seem like it. The follow-up now begins, but the kiting XXX still alive, burrowing onto the Ursa. Bear being dealt with for now. OP low, not dead just yet. G8 salvaging, they get three. Liquid prevail, but they had to spend a lot there, Lumi. They blew the Aegis, they blew the cheese, they did it outside the base. So they won't be able to threaten high ground with their full complement. At the same time, there's no out by that center coming in from the back line for him. And now the FB on the Bachi from the rear. They get the Ursa. That might force Mind Control back. The wheels might have just come off of this push. Mind Control slow to retreat, but the Caustic is going to make this a bit trickier. I don't think they can win that fight. They're going to try. It's going to be close here as Mind Control. Purge. Hit him from the front. But Loka with the tricks. Looking for the clean trade. And now they're going to back. I don't know if you want to go in. They're so far hard. Finally, IG. it's a burn? spiky mouthful. I don't know still about this, man. Still the commitment. <laughs> still the commitment. Oh, here comes Monkey King. Get out, get out. You're not going to get the kill. Icebox jumps in. Bubble can get strike. Jim hits the deck. And now Monkey King jumps forward. IG getting sloppy, getting desperate. Liquid able to take advantage. Can they get more? They group up top. They want to end this game. It's daytime. Fast. It's in daytime. Earth. Here comes Team Liquid. What are you going to do against this? No HS, no Chiefs, whatever. They're going to pull back everybody with Global Recall, and they're going to just hit buildings.
Liquid laying into the tier one tower. Ice Armor slowing them down as best Dying it can. But the siege is on now. Glyph gets Dying forced out. The whole gang is back. They try to kite the bristle, slow him down. But Liquid are determined. The sun also rises as this melee rack drops lower and lower. Liquid will take it. One lane now opened up. Range to fall as well. And the big thing that during this push, Miracle has that Desolator. So the Minus Armor really ticking into and then basically counteracting what the Frost Armor could do in these team fights. Instead of going mid, they will go to the bottom. The bottom tower is much lower and the Shrines are more spread apart, Dying making this defense here for IG much, much harder to come by. Upper right bracket now. lives on the line. Liquid are doing it, working on the melee racks. IG Dying must respond and they must do it soon. They look for the flag. XXS revving up the Epi. They but see what's him! They see him! A Swain! A miss! He gets nothing! Now Liquid chasing forward. IG racing in. They want to kill that Keeper. But GH elusive. They finally get onto him. Isolating him in the trees. Goes for the TP out. Where's the stuns? There are none! Away he goes, but still this does leave Matumbo Man stranded. The Ursa in a bit too far is gonna fall. Now the Bristle back, being overwhelmed, slowing him down with the Shivas. Miracle has to watch him as he slowly gets chipped away at. He's in the trees, hiding for what he can. Still GH back into the fray, keeping his team alive. Overextending perhaps, but Boca could be punished. A staggered retreat, but IG aren't ready to give up the chase just yet. They keep Ursa. on pushing forward. They want more. Buyback again. Ursa looking for the punish. He gets the kill. The Riki's down. And Lumi, that's a dieback. No smoke cloud for this fight. Liquid are very close. That melee Rex a bit over half HP. Can they hold the line? Like in Shapeshift, down for 25 seconds. I think without the Shapeshift and the Ricky, they have no way to stick on GH. GH is the most important hero right now. In fact, it's going to be Raiden jumping in. They want the tank. Ice Blast coming in, and they bounce it back in. GH with the Alec play. Team Liquid going in on the Raxus, and you're right, LD. They are doing it. Another set of Raxus. Fair goal. Man fighting against OP. Commitment from my control. It's all about that melee. Slowly, but surely. The mace does its work. One more swing. Down it goes. Two lanes for Liquid. They are hanging on, keeping the upper bracket dream alive. Now back to the Sand King. They need the third lane. IG are scrappy. They won't give up easy. But Liquid have the creep advantage now. Two lanes shoving in. It's a three pronged assault. They keep the push going. Now the tower falls, one last lane remains, that's all that stands between Liquid and the game three, Effigy's biting the dust, and now the fight breaking out, but Tumba Man control, but he gets off the enrage, he takes through it off, the chain frost bouncing, Ooh. beautiful stuff from the carry lift, his Q keeps his team in the game, Go for he is being chased, they're gonna bring him down, IG not out of this yet, pounding into the Ursa, he tries to fight it out, but the ice armor's there, the evasion is as well, and he can't get the kill, three fall for Liquid, close. Not done but yet. not over yet. Sand King teleports in, finds mind control. You'll set them. Here comes the cavalry. All five still alive for IG. They isolate him. They bring him down. Wants to help. He's waiting in position. Can mind control possibly get out of here? The quills are stacking up. He's slow. There's he no gets way. hit from the front. He they will fall. Yeah, no. All right. IG. Yeah, no. Damage oh, control. Man. Damage oh, control. Oh, they are in now. Go back to base. Push out the waves. OP can't do that. He is an alchemist. Somebody's got to watch out for bottom. You see the key differences in these team fights is IG's ability to isolate QH. GH, sorry. You gotta kill GH and you make sure that he doesn't constantly give him mana, give him HP through his Illuminate. He also makes buyback super crucial. Ursa fought back during that middle of the team fight and he was able to get recalled in instantly. You kill GH and you have a chance. Yeah, they are definitely identifying him as public enemy number one. IG him down, chasing man. him out. There's the glimmer. He's got the ghost up there as well. The Wukong's command drop. Saving private GH is the call. But in goes OP. Diving deeper for this. He turns back for Curl. The rest of the team takes the keeper down. He's got the buyback. Curl does not. And pouncing away, Miracle retreats to the confines of high ground. The base slowly being chipped from north and south as Liquid Screams are doing what the heroes can't right now. Don't worry about it, LD. They regen. Tier 4 towers. They're okay. They're gonna keep pushing. They are killing out the buffer buildings, though. 
That's true. IG still trying to force the issue here. Miracle looking to slow them down in XXS with the pursuit. No dukes from you, Miracle, they say. The stuns get locked in. The blade forward. IG not out of it yet. Kill after kill coming their way. Towers are falling. Liquid perhaps feeling a bit overconfident. And on to your hats, folks. IG could just force a Rax out. His keeper is back in five seconds. Again, how much can he kite? They have I the do. Ice Blast, Lumi. It's a lot and of push from IG. Mauling this tower down. Mind Control gets in, but the Frost Armor protects them. Radiant's tower falls. The fallen. stall. It's all about GH now, it feels. Well, Lycan and Wolfarm just getting completely stunned up by GH. They want to go and double force that pushes them back. Good kiting. Liquid stalling nicely here, forcing Burning Low. He may have to retreat. That leaves OP on his own. He's got the BOTs. Manta out. TP away. And no bash. Bash, bash, oh. bash. There is a basher available in that Ursa. Unfortunately, they're not done yet. They're still chasing mind control. It has the gem. And you're right, LB, they, they need to start pushing out the, the base. I, I just say, you know, care for do regen, but it's it's yeah. slow. Yeah, it's slow. They took regen. some heavy damage as those waves kept on shoving. But hey, in. that was a big turn of event for IG. You know, they got a couple of buildings, got a couple of extra kills, and more importantly, they got Team Liquid off their back for a little bit. But again, the third Roshan. I mentioned how important the second Roche was in terms of taking two lanes of racks. The third one just as important. And I don't think Team Liquid will be challenged here. Although, as I say that, IG Dyer's smokes out. IG love challenging. They rotate around XXS with an Arcane Rune, so the low cooldown stun and This fight. Where's GH? Finds GH. Oh, almost, almost. There you go. Burrows in. Still clips him, and now the connection is Popoka surges forward. GH stays alive. The Glimmer Cape enough to keep him a funny shape, but Bernie now and nipping at his heels. Go Scepter, doing what it can. Finally, they will slay the beast. He instantly buys back. They know how crucial this keeper is. They know they can't afford to give up this Roche. Liquid are committing for it, and now it's the Sand King they want. The Sand King they might get. Burrows away. Looks for the save with the Lotus Orb coming through. Will it be enough? They'd rather oh sack the Riki, but that is a gem down. In fact, I don't think there are any gems available for IG, whether it's on their heroes or in their shop. So they're going to be playing without vision for a while. The buyback here from GH secures the Roshan, Aegis and Cheese into the coffers of Team Liquid. And we are still in the same situation where IG is down by two set of racks. I... Somebody wants that cheese, surely. Okay. Miracle. Fermenting does not work in Dota 2. That is, that is already molten cheese. Yes. Can't get any smellier. But it still heals when you need it. And Liquid, they've got plenty coming from GH. Now, Lumi, if he dies in this push, that could be a big problem. Because we've seen how important he is to their team fight. Liquid are smoking in. They're just looking to dive. An early assault on this melee rack. Perhaps finding kills to start it off. Let's no see. The jump comes through, but the Sand King there with the kite. Bashing off the Bash. yells. XXS, he burrows back to safety. Liquid have gone really deep for this kill. Ice Blast streaming into the fountain. Dodge that Ice Blast. Bang, he's gone. Sand King out for 100 seconds. That might be it. Liquid just got to push these lanes in, but look at the waves. They're being cut by the Alk. Illusions denying these creeps. Buying time, but creeps are coming top. Mind control. Whack. 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 Continues to work. Miracle at his side. Obaka going in on the back line. He's going for the kill on Kuroki. Kuroki forced that back out. He's jumping back in. He wants Kuroki. Miracle comes in though. They get Obaka. Chain Frost will finish the job of one one trade. They are down both supports now. That AA has buyback. OP now comes in one at a time into the meat grinder. Commitment here, but that bristle stays alive. Very tanky. They keep on nipping at his heels, but can they bring him down? OP diving him. Now Matu looking to bail out his buddy with the turnaround. Liquid once more under the breach, and they have done it. Game three awaits. LD, you want a crazy statistic? Sure. IG was leading in gold the entire game. Just shows you that sometimes gold isn't everything. Just because you got three will greed, just because you're farming well, the pressure from Team Liquid. That GH Aghanim Scepter was so, so key. What a resilient showing here in game number two from Team Liquid. They 
were up against it. You could sense the urgency. The Alk was free farming, the Lycan was catching up. The Riki killed the Courier three times, constantly warding, slowing down their overall game plan.